varicose veins that are visible to the naked eye on translumination or by means of near-infrared reflection and absorption techniques constitute only the effect of varicose disease. To cure varicose disease, we have to treat the cause. This can only be done by regenerating the vessel walls. Regeneration means restoration of the altered vascular structure and function. Current sclerotherapy treatments, phlebectomy and functional ligature, are irrational because they are two-dimensional techniques which act on the effect of the disease, not on its cause. Such treatments, which are not free from side effects, destroy the normal anatomy of the veins and cannot achieve the desired result the disappearance of all the visible veins and the functional recovery of the venous circulation. In order to understand how this result can be achieved, we need to recognize the true causes of varicose disease. Varicose disease has a biological cause and an anatomical cause. The biological cause is the congenital myopragia of the walls of the vessels of the superficial and perforating circulation. The deep veins and the saphena are better protected by the robust sheaths that envelop them. In order to understand the anatomical cause, we need to consider the venous circulation in the lower limbs as part of a pump which enables the blood to travel up the leg from the foot to the abdominal region. The motor of this pump, or peripheral heart, is constituted by the calf muscles, which are able to generate high pressure. 300 millimeters of mercury. Congenital weakness of the walls of the perforating veins, which convey the blood from the superficial circulation to the deep circulation, causes these veins to dilate and their valves to become incontinent. When the muscles of the peripheral heart contract, some of the blood that should be pumped to the right atrium escapes into the superficial circulation which becomes dilated. Hemodynamic hypertension produces different clinical effects, depending on the myopragia of the walls of the veins of the superficial circulation. If the walls of the superficial veins are very weak, evident varices will form, and no telangiectasias will be present. In such cases, phlebotherapy is more rapid. By contrast, if the walls of the reticular veins can withstand the increased pressure, venules and telangiectasias will form. Ectatic veins in the lower limbs therefore represent an escape valve for the hemodynamic hypertension generated by the valvular insufficiency of the perforating veins. Thus, venous ectasia is caused by the blood that escapes from the deep circulation. Obviously, removing or obliterating the escape valve without correcting the anomalous hypertension, as the traditional techniques do, does not treat the circulation. It merely produces new varicose veins and high-pressure telangiectasias, matting. Moreover, myopragia is not restricted to a limited anatomical region. Rather, it involves the entire perforating and superficial circulation. This means that treatment must be extended to the entire superficial and perforating circulation and not be restricted to those areas where highly visible veins are present. Hemodynamic hypertension caused by the insufficiency of the perforating veins must be regarded as the main cause of varicose disease. There are 150 perforating veins, almost all of which are too small to be seen on Doppler imaging. With regard to hydrostatic pressure, the valvular and osteal insufficiency of the great saphena is of only marginal importance, since the pressure at the ankle ranges from 70 to 100 millimeters of mercury, depending on the height of the column of liquid, whether the valves are continent or not. Indeed, the valves do not break up the hydrostatic pressure. Some individuals are even born without saphenous valves, and yet they do not develop varicose veins. By contrast, subjects with continent valves both in the saphena and in the superficial femoral vein may have evident varicose veins. While the hydrostatic pressure in the veins at the ankle is of only modest importance, 
A far greater role is played by hydrostatic thrust. This is the force that the blood exerts perpendicularly to the venous wall. And it is this force which tends to dilate the vein. Hydrostatic thrust is the product of the pressure multiplied by the internal diameter of the vein and by a height of one centimeter. Its effect was elegantly demonstrated by the French scientist and philosopher Blaise Pascal in his famous barrel experiment. Unfortunately, hydrostatic thrust has been completely ignored by official phlebology. If a vessel is dilated, the internal pressure acts on a larger surface area, thus developing greater force. The greater hydrostatic thrust is not due to the greater quantity of blood in the vessel, but rather to the greater internal surface area of the dilated vessel. In both veins, the hydrostatic pressure at the lowest point is the same. The hydrostatic thrust, however, is different. In the second vein, the most distal portion of which is dilated, an ulcer may form, even though this vein contains less blood. These considerations highlight the importance of reducing the diameter of the vessels in the most distal regions of the limbs, where the incontinence of the perforating veins generates the highest hemodynamic pressure. In varicose disease, the following mechanism is hypothesized. Myopragia of the vessel walls, dilation of the perforating veins, valvular insufficiency, hemodynamic hypertension, dilation of the veins, increased hydrostatic thrust, edema and compression of the tissues at the ankle, trophic disorders, ulcer. These considerations have prompted us to adopt a completely different therapeutic approach. Instead of obliterating or removing the veins, we regenerate the venous walls. We thank the French Phlebology Society and Jean-Marc Chardonneau for inviting us to Paris for the third time, which shows that, in France, unlike Italy, the search for innovative therapies is continuing. The main key concepts underlying TRAP are Varicose disease cannot be cured by treating the effect and not the cause of the pathology. A three-dimensional pathology cannot be treated by two-dimensional techniques, such as sclerotherapy or phlebectomy. The visible veins represent the escape valve for the hemodynamic hypertension generated by the valvular insufficiency of the perforating veins. They disappear when the hypertension is corrected. Treatment must not be restricted to a limited portion of the circulation. The entire superficial and perforating circulation must be treated. If the venous walls can be treated, there is no reason to obliterate, remove, burn or ligate the veins. The venous circulation cannot be treated by ligating the veins in accordance with hemodynamic studies that are as useless as they are complex. The best way to treat the walls of the veins of the perforating and superficial circulation is to apply treatment through the veins that are visible to the naked eye on transillumination or by means of near-infrared absorption and reflection techniques. The regenerative solution injected goes exactly where it is needed, to the dilated perforating and communicating veins. Young patients with a family history of varicose disease can be treated before the varices become visible to the naked eye. The Safina is innocent. Echo Doppler is blind. It cannot see the perforating veins, almost all of which have a diameter of 1 or 2 millimeters. The syringe is also an important diagnostic tool, as it reveals the degree of dilation of the non-visible vessels that we are injecting. Even the smallest telangiectasia is caused by hemodynamic hypertension. Hemodynamic hypertension always manifests itself at the surface. Only in cases of advanced trophic disorders is visibility limited. Finally, it should be pointed out that varicose disease is the most common disease in the world. As such, it deserves the greatest attention. Likewise, patients have a right to proper treatment. Unfortunately, in Italy, this attention has yet to be manifested.